Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're watching Chef, the movie. I, you know, I don't know why. Just, I just wanted to make it clear that I'm not just talking about like when you're watching a chef, when you're watching Chef, the movie. It's it's a movie. Anyways, now that we got that out of the way, uh, spoilers for this movie. Um, if you haven't watched it, I definitely recommend it. It's a, it's a nice movie. It's a family friendly movie. It's cool. You know what I mean? It's got John Favreau, John Leguizamo, um, Sofia Vergara, Scarlett Johansson. So very, very nice movie, but I don't even really want to talk about the plot. I, I just want to focus on, uh, uh, okay, briefly, I'll just say the plot. Um, John Favreau is a really good chef at a restaurant. He gets embarrassed, humiliated by Twitter. Um, ends up working on a food truck. He makes a food truck. Um, and he sells Cubano sandwiches with his son after his divorce. And they have a bonding experience where they go out for the summer and they sell sandwiches. Cubanos throughout the country. And they build a social media following, which his son like handles and takes care, care of. And... They go out on the road and they do your, do their thing. And they cook. They cook in the movie. All right. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to focus on the food, the cuisine. So the first thing I want to talk about, the first food that, uh, not in the movie, but like that I just want to talk about. Um, it's actually the scene with Scarlett Johansson, I think she only has, she has like a brief scene in the movie. It's not like she's like, has like a big thing. Like she's not like heavily involved in the movie. She's in there briefly, but anyways, John Favreau, his character, the main, the main chef of the movie, um, he makes her like a pasta and she eats it, you know, very, you know, lovingly or something like that. Anyways, that pasta that he makes is called, now, I don't, I don't want to say it wrong, but I don't know how to like exactly pronounce it. So I could be doing, is it aglio e olio? Is that how you say it? Or is it aglio e olio? You know what? Whatever. I like the first one better. Aglio e olio. Something like that. And essentially, it's just a, a simple pasta, very simple pasta. Um, it's not in any way, shape, or form meant to be, like, crazy um, difficult. You know how, like, some pasta recipes have to, like, not like it take not like pasta is, like, super complicated. Um, it's just that sometimes there are a lot of steps involved, and sometimes you don't have all the ingredients. You know, like... Um, what is the one? The cacio e pepe, where they do it in like the big cheese wheel. And like, you can't get, you can't, you know, you can, obviously you can order your own big cheese wheel, but it's like, you know, who, who really can do that and like really afford it? So a simple, uh, pasta like this, you know, definitely works. And so it's really just like, I don't, I don't see any anything like added to it all that much except for um it's just the pasta they put some oil in there garlic um some parsley cheese and then uh I think I think he squeezed some lemon into it you know something very simple very easy you know what I mean but they make it look really artistic but it's like pasta is just delicious in general so I think uh I think that was what they were going for for this. It's a very simple, very easy um, Italian dish. Something that you can make really quickly. So, I don't know. I feel like if it were me, I I, I, pref I really like um, adding, like, something to it. Like, that's why I'm a fan of, like, chicken alfredo pasta. But then again, that's not really... That's more of, like, American pasta. It's not really real Italian cuisine. So I guess if you want the classic real Italian version, you just do it straight pasta with nothing else in it and uh, enjoy it that way. And I'm sure it's just as delicious, you know. So very simple, very easy. And 
the way that they, he serves it to her, it makes it, you know, it's very like in a romantic kind of like way, so to speak. You know what I mean? And she's just kind of like, she eats it and she's just like, yeah, this is delicious. You know what I mean? So it's just a little simple way of being like the way to a woman's heart is through food to, you know, through her stomach in the same way that like in the princess and the frog, Tiana says the same thing about, uh, the way to a man's heart, you know, as it means through his stomach, you know, reversal, you know what I mean? It works both ways. So all I'm trying to say is cook for your woman every now and then guys, like get in the kitchen and chef it up next. Uh, Ooh, this one's a good one. Okay. So in the movie, they have to sell Cubano sand- Cubano sandwiches. And for the Cubano sandwiches, they have like this, they, they put certain things in it. Um, but the main one is like this beautiful pork that they, they marinate and that they like soak in, um, what is it called? Like, a. They, they essentially soak it in like all of these amazing juices and whatnot. And then after they soak it in all the juices, they put like a marinade on top of it. And then they let it soak even more in the marinade. So that way it absorbs all the flavor. So a brine, brine. So they soak it in the brine first. So that's that's kind of like the, the base for the, the sandwich or like a, the main ingredient. So it's like... If you've ever made like a ham and turkey sandwich, this would be like the turkey, so to speak, you know, so it wouldn't be anything crazy. So first, what you have to do is you have to soak the pork. So you get like a big thing of uh, pork. uh, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's belly. I think it's like another, it's another piece of the, the, the pig, you know what I mean? It's just, it's pork, whatever. And then they put it in the brine, and that brine has all kinds of seasoning and juices and, you know, things to to really make the, the pork absorb a lot of flavor. So you let that soak in the brine, and the way that they do it in the movie is it makes it seem like it all happens like rapid quick, you know, like you soak it in the brine for an hour and then you take it out and then you do the, the, the marinade and then voila, it's all done. But in actuality, uh, like the, the typical recipe for like what they, they make will take like hours or days, you know what I mean? So it takes prep time to get it to the, the quality that it has to be at, you know what I mean? Which is why like if, you're serving or like uh, in that kind of environment or like a food truck or like at a restaurant, they'll prep those kinds of meals and they'll have like however many on hand. So let's say uh, you have like five of those, you know, five of those, uh, you have five pieces of pork soaking and getting ready in the brine. And then you have another five pieces um, in the marinade you know, letting that sit in for a couple more hours or a day or so. And then you have like five more that are like ready to serve and that you can cut and that you can put into a, into the Cubano and then you can serve it. You know what I mean? So you have to have like backups and everything ready. So that way the next day you have one to serve, you have one in the brine, you have the other one in the marinade from the day before. So it's just a constant rotation of it. It's the way that it works, but for them, they make it seem like it's it's all quick and easy. So for that, for the for the marinade, it's it's a uh, essentially the same thing as the brine. It's just that there are a couple of I I mean it's not the exact same thing, but it's just they add a couple of different things. They put it on top. They let it soak in, and then you know you do your thing. You're allowed to. To cook it and, and make it as delicious as you, you need it to be. And then and then you can make your Cubano. And then the Cubano, I think there's like a special bread that you use 
or like a kind of like not not special bread, but there's like a certain bread type that you use. It's not like regular white bread. It's more of like a what's it called? Like a sort of a how do I describe it? It's like a you know when you go to like a deli and they have like um those long those long pieces of bread i you know it's just bread you know just like imagine like a a really nice um thin piece of white bread you know what i mean it's just like a a sandwich roll or whatever i don't know how to ex- exactly explain it but anyways whatever you a baguette baguette there we go there we go that's the word okay baguette right so it's like a a flat very like nice Cuban baguette and then what you do is this is the this is the thing right you stack it so what you do is you you put uh you get the bread right cut it in half long ways and then what you do is you put the the pork that you just made right with the the brine and the marinade and you cooked it right you roasted it the roast mojo pork is what it's called. You put that first. Then after that, you stack it with uh, ham. And then after the ham, you put Swiss cheese on there. And then you put pickles, right? And then after the pickles, you put a spread of mustard on one slice of the bread, I think. And then you you put you close it. Then you brush the top with butter. Okay, that's very important because then it gives it like a, a really, I mean, it just adds so much flavor to it. You put you brush that on top, right? And then after that, you have to. Um, in the movie, they'd use like a a sandwich press or like a you know like a grill press, and then you just wait for it to turn golden brown for the cheese to melt, and then you cut it in half, you wrap it up, you serve it. You know, so I I always wanted to try it. You know what I mean? As I, the the movie just makes it look so delicious and good, and you're always just like, man, I wish I could just like taste that. You know what I mean? But because uh, it's so different when you make it. You know what I mean? It doesn't make it any less delicious. It just means that like now I have to sit around and wait. You know, two days just to get the the base started, and then even then, you know. I feel like maybe I'll mess up or I don't have the right equipment or I don't know what I'm doing. So it's just about trial and error. Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes you're going to lose. You just got to roll with the punches, I guess. But that takes me to the next great sandwich that they, they make in the movie. Um, it's not as not as fancy as the, the Cubana that they sell throughout the movie, but it is just as delicious and it's like a real classic american classic and that's the uh ever so lovely grilled cheese sandwich so in the movie john favreau has a son he's like around like 10 or 12 years old and he's just chilling like he's just on his phone or playing video games or whatever and his dad is like you know what let me make you some lunch so he he toasts two pieces of bread now i don't know about you guys, I mean, I just stick with regular white bread for my, you know, grilled cheese needs. Um, but you could use any kind of bread that you want. I think he uses a. Uh, I think it's just white bread. I don't. I don't know if it, if it's anything like special like that. But, and then he uses like multiple different cheeses. Um, I usually stick with just like basic American or cheddar. Or, you know, just essentially whatever I got around the house. But he uses like a good concoction, like a mix of cheeses. He'll put like, he'll put like white cheddar cheese, yellow, Swiss, you know, he'll put like a bunch of there. He'll have like a, a perfect thing of butter to put on the bread and it'll come out crispy and clean and just nice. And he cooks it on like, um, on like the kitchen flat, stove i forget what it's called the non-stick stove whatever whatever that is like the perfect for like cooking a bunch of foods on i man why am i blanking on it it's just a it's just a non-stick stove um like a, a big kitchen one and that's where he cooks it on and it's times like that where i'm like you, the equipment really does kind of like add a little something to it you know i mean you can do it on a pan just as easy but like i feel like that that stove 
that that stove he uses just like adds a certain quality that I'm I'm not able to achieve, but whatever. Uh, he cooks it on there. He waits for it to uh, gently uh, melt. The, the cheese gently melts, and the bread gets to a golden brown, and it's just the right amount of like buttery and crispy. And then he flips it over, and then he puts it on a perfect plate, and then he cuts it into a triangle, and it makes the most amazing crunch you've ever heard and it's like cheesy and gooey and then this is this is this is the thing that pisses me off the most okay the kid just sits there and he eats it now i know this is like ah whatever you know what i mean it's just a grilled cheese sandwich but i gotta tell you dude when i saw that man make that grilled cheese sandwich and then that kid doesn't even take the time to really appreciate it which is like i guess that's, those are kids these days, you know, they don't know how good a flavor that they're really eating unless they like eat like terrible food. You know what I mean? It's the difference between like eating, uh, you know, it's, it really is the difference between eating like at a, like canned soup and then soup that you make yourself. You know what I mean? Like there's a big difference in between that. There's a big difference in quality in like making your own pasta and buying store-bought pasta. You know, they're both good and you know, you can you can kind of feel the quality difference there, but it's just like it feels so much more, I think fresh pasta is a lot more delicious than say store-bought pasta. You know what I mean? But that's just me. Um, I'm sure that, and it's not like a, a gigantic leap, but there is, you can't taste the difference. You know what I mean? And that's how I felt when I watched this kid eat this sandwich, like crispy, beautiful, like just the perfect grilled cheese sandwich. And he just like eats it like it's nothing. And I'm just like, kid, at least show a little appreciation here. Like, can't you be a little bit more like, mm, you know what I mean? Can't you just like give some sort of expression that this is a delicious, like, I just felt like. He wasn't appreciating it. But whatever. He was just a kid. It's just a movie. I would have appreciated that grilled cheese sandwich. And that takes me to my next appreciation food. They go to New Orleans in this movie. And they have beignets. I mean, it's just... I can't get away from beignets. Beignets are ever so important to me, all right? I need to try them someday in New Orleans. And beignets are like a perfect walk and talk kind of like a food. You know what I mean? You get your beignets, you walk down, you know, New Orleans and you just eat them with your friends or whatnot. Like beignets, yes, you could definitely sit down and eat a big old plate of them with your friends and share it for the whole table and whatnot. Like, that's great. That's fine. But they're also just like a perfect walk and talk food. You know, there's certain foods that you can walk and talk with, right? But that's because they're travel, tra- uh, travelable. Is that the right word there? You can take them on the go, right? Like you can take a burrito on the go. You can take a burger and a sandwich and those kinds of things that you can eat as you walk. You know what I mean? But beignets are like a, a really nice dessert, like ice cream that you can take on a walk. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of dough, doughy, sugary kind of a thing. And it's just like so delicious. I feel like it's a perfect walk and talk like dessert or like snack. A really nice sweet treat. But speaking of sweet treats, there's another thing in the movie is uh, they they make a chocolate lava cake. And John Favreau has this big scene where he's exploding at a critic and he's kind of talking about like you how he makes it. So he's like, what makes it a molten lava cake is you take a frozen ball of ganache, you put it into the cake to cake batter, right? Then you cook it and then... It sits in, then you flip it, and then once you cut it, when you serve it hot, you cut it open, it'll pour out the, the chocolate that you just put inside the cake, and then it'll it'll look like molten lava, and that's why it's, you know, that's what makes it molten. And then he, like, screams at the guy, and then everybody records it and makes fun of him, and then he's like, he's ruined, you know what I mean? That's That was essentially the, the big blow-up, and what, like, 
got him kind of fired or humiliated. He was already fired, I think. But, you know, and uh, I've seen him, I think he was on like a, on a, the Binging with Babish and he kind of like remakes the, the chocolate lava kick, which is great. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't seem all that difficult uh, to make. And not that I've made it, but like, you know, I just think it's it's a really cool dessert. And another dessert that he makes in the movie, man, it's just a lot of desserts now. Um, he makes like this ice cream with like raspberries and blackberries and strawberry, you know, like he just like fruits and ice cream. Or is it like, uh, I think it might be, is it ice cream? I think it might just be like whipped cream or something like a very, it could just be like a, a nice, oh, it's, um, it's berries and cream. Okay. So this was, this was a cool part of the movie. Okay. I really, I really like it when they, they glamorize baking because it just makes it seem, this is why I like the, the great British baking show is because like they, they have a certain amount of time to bake and do stuff. And uh, it kind of like makes baking fun and a, and a bit intense. But in this movie, it kind of makes baking simple and it makes it look uh, very elegant and beautiful. So what he does is he makes this, um, he makes like some caramel and he like swirls it around in the pot. And then he pours it onto a, like a baking sheet on a, on a baking baking pan or whatever, right? A, a, a baking sheet, whatever. He pours it on there and then he lets it sit and cool. And then once it cools, it makes like this great, like almost glass, you know, caramel or whatever. And then he breaks it. He like smashes it. And then he cracks it and he puts it into like a, into another bag or whatever. And then he puts it into a, um, a blender and he, blends it until it's like really fine and dusty and it's like dust and then he sprinkles it on top of the berry and the whipped cream so that way uh while while he was letting the caramel cool he make mixed like powdered sugar and heavy cream until it got like stiff peaks or um whatever you know what i mean he just Mixed it really well, and that way it, it felt really good. And then he put a bunch of berries in a bowl. He put the um, the the cream on top, and then he and then what he does with the dust is he puts it in a sifter, and then he br taps it and puts a bunch of that caramel uh, crack dust all over it, and it just makes it look so cool. It just makes it look like man, that's a lot of sugar. So overall. When you're watching Chef, it just makes you want to cook. It makes me want to cook. Like seeing that berries and cream thing makes me want to make berries and cream. And like, I would, you know, I've never even thought about like eating just cream. And, well, I, I do eat yogurt. It's kind of the same thing. But this one's just like, it's fresh fruit at the bottom. And then the cream, you know, he just places it on top. You know, so... I don't even know how that would look to eat it. Is it just like you mix it all together? Can you even mix it all together? Is that disrespectful? Do you have to do like a little bit of like raspberry and blackberry and then like a, a little piece of whipped cream? Or like how does it, I don't know how it exactly works, but you know, that's just the, that's just the way that it, the way that it goes. And I don't think you have to be like overly like critical or like think too much about like eating it, but like, because it's, it looks plate in the movie, it looks plated so nice. You're just kind of like, it'd be a shame for me to like ruin this or to, you know, eat it wrong, I guess, so to speak. But overall, when you're watching Chef, it just makes you want to cook and it makes you want to try all the, the best food out there. You know what I mean? And you just want to know how to like, it, it makes me so curious to know how they make the best food out there. You know what I'm saying? How do I, how do I make the best aglio e olio? How do I make the best cubano? How do I make the best grilled cheese? How do I make delicious chocolate lava cake and berries and cream? You know what I mean? 
And uh, that's just me personally. I just think that cooking and baking are, are really fun um, things to do. And it's like, we all got to eat. So we might as well make something that's very delicious. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll talk to you guys all next time. Thank you.